We're going to look over in Romans chapter 1. Uh, as you know, I've been spending some time there in the past few weeks. And Lord willing, next Sunday night, the pastor will be back. Uh, I'm not going to spend as much time in Romans today, but we're going to, we're going to, that's where we're going to start at today. Romans chapter 1, verse 11. The Apostle Paul's words that God's given him to share with us here, he says, verse 11, he says, I, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift that in you may be established. That, if you remember last week, I shared a few thoughts along those lines. And what, as I continued my study this week, I seemed to not be able to get past verse 11 and specifically uh, looking at that word impart. And if you remember last week, it, it, I think you can find the meaning to be pretty close to mean to share something that is precious to us. And so certainly I believe that's what the Apostle Paul had in mind here. He was going to share what was precious to him and uh, serving, uh, uh, sharing uh, the cause of Christ and the things of Christ. That certainly ought to be precious to us tonight or to be precious to us every day, 24-7. So uh, uh, as I looked at this, I, I just couldn't hardly uh, get away from that, and I thought about a few things, and, and it wasn't long the Lord started sending me down a path here that I'd like to share with you tonight. But, um, uh, you know, I think it's precious. You read over in Romans six twenty three, for the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So, Thank God, I'm glad that uh, it, it's certainly precious tonight to know that our sin debt's been paid, and uh, uh, I'm thankful for that tonight. But as I, as I studied on this and looked at it, I, I, uh, I started to think how, how precious it was, uh, uh, some of these great uh, uh, fish stories that, uh, uh, that the Bible has, and that's what I, I want to look at just uh, for a few minutes tonight. Uh, some of these uh, 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 precious fish stories, I call them. I like to fish. I fish some myself. Uh, uh, but the most important fishing we could ever do would be for fishing for souls. And uh, so I'm thankful for that. But before we can get there, I, I think we ought to turn over to Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, it seems like uh, almost if I had to call this something, I'd call it a prelude to the, uh, to the message tonight. Isaiah chapter uh, 61, I don't really remember quite how the Lord got me to this, uh, 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 this verse this week, but I found myself spending uh, some time there that I think I, I certainly feel led to share a few things with you uh, uh, tonight. Uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verse 1, that's the only verse we're going to read, uh, the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to, pro to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So let's have a word of prayer, and I'll share a few thoughts with you uh, here tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you give us a good day already in the house of God, and certainly, Lord, throughout the day, it's, it's, uh, we're thankful for the Lord's day, and Lord, if you see fit to uh, allow us to have another day of life, we'll be thankful for that. And, and Lord, we just uh, ask you to help us tonight, Lord. We know we can't accomplish anything unless it's uh, 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 by your direction. So, God, just have your will and your way in our hearts and lives and, and just uh, 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 help us always remember to praise you and thank you for all you do. In the precious one the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. So it says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the, because the Lord has anointed me to preach. I looked at a few things on, them, on those words. It's always good, to, to, I think, to have you a good, strong concordance and uh, spend a little time digging down into those words and, and seeing that there's uh, uh, usually a deeper meaning than what uh, the superficial meaning might be what, or what we think it might mean, but that a word... Uh, anointed, uh, as, as God had given these words also to the prophet uh, Isaiah here, that word anointed means uh, uh, provided and powered by the Holy Spirit. 
And so, thank God, I'm glad, uh, you know, when we get our messages, that's where they need to come from. And if we're following uh, his lead, he'll give us exactly what we need right on time, all, t- all the time. And then uh, it says, uh, it, it, it uses that word preach. It says the messenger uh, announcing the message. I believe that's what it's uh, 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 alluding to here and, and sharing with us tonight, making it, uh, helping us to understand that. And, uh, but it says, uh, uh, he, he says a reason for that. He says, he says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And I studied that word just a little bit, and there's some things there that, that I, I'd like to just make a little mention before we get over into our, our fish stories tonight. Uh, the, uh, the first one I, 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 I found when I studied on that word, word a little bit was it's, it's talking about those submitted to God. And uh, I, I believe that uh, if you study that word out, you certainly can find that. That's what the uh, reference is here to too. And, and if you're saved tonight, thank God, we're, we should be submitted to God. Uh, uh, so, so you got the saved that uh, should be submitted to God. And uh, if you, you got the unsaved that if they get submitted to God, then they'll get savable. And uh, so, so it, it's, a, uh, it's a message to the meek. And then it's, the, it's those that realize God is still working on me. Now, I, I, I don't know if anybody's arrived here tonight, but it certainly isn't me. And he's still working on me. And I, I find he's just still whittling, uh, chipping away at me. And I'm thankful for that. Every time he chips a little something out, boy, I'm telling you what, sometimes it might be a little, little uh, uh, painful, a little, little rough. But, boy, I'm telling you what, when, when you see God's hand in it, it's, it's, it's good for you. And I'm thankful for that. I like to spend some time up Bay's Mountain hiking or running a little bit, uh, looking at the animals. And uh, uh, I, I go by a certain area up there and, and they've got some, some beavers, and they're, they're pretty active. I don't know if it has to do with this time of the year or whether it was, seemed like uh, late fall. was uh, They were real active, and I guess they were preparing for uh, uh, the lean times of, of winter. But, uh, but you can go along where them trees, and, boy, they've, they've chunked out big old, big old clippings. And I, I, it just amazes me how they can do that. Uh, but it, it amazes me, you know, just how, how much that – that there is for us to God, for God to work on us uh, with, and so I'm thankful that uh, that He's still working on me. And then the, the the third thing that I associate with this word was gentle in circumstances. And uh, boy, you know what? I find myself sometimes, uh, you know, I, I have struggled with this sometimes, and sometimes I don't win the battle as well as I should. But I'll tell you what: if we're the meek today, if we're if we're uh, those submitted to God then there's a way that we should respond in all circumstances, and that's the gentle in, in uh, uh, circumstances. So, so, uh, so that's the first part of that, that verse there. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. So thank God for preaching tonight. I like to hear good preaching, and, uh, and we need it. They, we, we really need it. Um, thank God we've got our, our personal study time, and... And we can study all over the world any, any time, uh, but there's a time for preaching. And I believe that's uh, 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 some things that we can see here in this, uh, in this verse. Uh, but it says, uh, 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 to preach good tidings uh, unto the meek. Uh, it says, he has sent me to bind up uh, the brokenhearted, uh, you know, the hurting. So thank God, I'm glad that, uh, that God knows what we need. And when he, when he has a message uh, for the congregation, it's not a message just for one or two or 75% or 99%. It's for 100%. There'll be something everybody can get from the message. And I'm, I'm thankful tonight. Uh, and so for, uh, for those that are brokenhearted, and, and uh, there's a lot of brokenheartedness in the world, uh, even in the church. So there's a lot of people hurting. Uh, but, uh, but he says also, not only uh, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, but to proclaim liberty to the, uh, to the captive, captives. So, uh, you know, there's help. And, uh, I thought, you know, there's, there's help for the hurting, but boy, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's help for, uh, 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 for those uh, in captivity tonight. And boy, I'm, I'm telling you what, to proclaim, proclaim liberty, I'm glad there's help. But then it goes on in the last thing in that verse. It says, uh, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So there's hope. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful they still hope tonight. There's a lot of people that, uh, uh, that, are, in, that are in prison tonight, and I don't mean uh, in the lockdown, which there's a lot of them uh, also, but there's a lot of pe people in the prison of this world today, and uh, I'm glad that they still hope. We, 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 can, we can pray for them. We can go uh, and share the gospel with them. If they're, if they're ever going to get saved, we've got a message to deliver. So that's just a little prelude that I felt like uh, going over with tonight. seemed like every time I tried to move on past that this week, I got sent right back there. So I want to just share a few uh, precious fish stories with us tonight. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, they just not, won't be a whole lot of places to turn to tonight, but we have... Uh, a few places, and, and all these will be in the Gospels, I think. But let's look in Luke chapter uh, uh, chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, if you want to turn your Bible there, or you can just listen, whatever uh, you care to do. I do recommend turning in the Bible. I like to see, uh, you know, it's good to hear the Word of God, but it's good to see it written down on the pages of this old King James Bible. Thank God for the, for the Bible. Luke chapter 5. And uh, uh, when I think about a precious, uh, precious fish story, that I think about, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, how good God is at positioning us for success. And I believe that's what you can see here in uh, uh, chapter 5. Let's start reading there about verse 1. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of, the, uh, of God, he stood by the lake uh, Genesaret uh, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their net. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people uh, out of the ship. And so, thank God, I'm glad, uh, you know, if you'd have been uh, in that number that day, that would have been the right place to be and the right time to be was where Jesus was teaching. Well, that's always, that's still good today. Being, uh, it's a good, it's the right place to be, the right time to be is when, uh, when the Lord is uh, providing for us uh, uh, through preaching, teaching, and uh, uh, we're thankful for that. But verse four, now I want you to look at that just, uh, uh, just a little bit here. It says, um, "Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught." And Simon answered. Uh, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down uh, the net. Boy, I'm telling you what, there's a lot we can say uh, about uh, uh, Peter here, uh, but uh, some of it uh, we can probably say about ourselves. Like, we, you know, we come to church expecting nothing. That's usually, you know, that may be the same way we leave, but, but we ought to come expecting something. When the Lord's got... Uh, uh, you know, got some preaching for us and some teaching for us. We ought to expect that God's got something for us. And, uh, uh, but now Simon, I, you know, I, he, he, he said, according to the reference here, he said, uh, we've toiled all night. Uh, and, and, being, and, and they hadn't done it uh, any good at all. Uh, I can relate to a fishing story like that. But, boy, I'm glad that, you know, it don't take for a moment to God to adjust us and put us right where we need it, right, when, right where we need to be, right when we need to be there to be successful. And, uh, and, and you know the story here. This is not a new story, but it's a, it's a precious fish story the way I see it. And verse 6 says, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. So thank God, I'm telling you what, it, it, it makes a lot of difference when, uh, uh, when you follow the Lord. You're on the right track. You're on the right road. Uh, uh, you can expect se uh, success there. If, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in chapter, uh, uh, chapter 5 here, verse 1, he says, It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the, uh, by the lake, Genesaret. So thank God, I, you know, the people were... Wanting to hear from God. I, that'd be a good movement today. Boy, a lot of people wanting to hear from God. Now, I understand that we have some empty spots tonight because some people are serving in different areas. They're working with the kids and, and a lot of, lot of things. But, but there's a lot of empty seats tonight because people ain't pressing too hard. But thank God there is some people that's probably listening in tonight that God's had them dialed in because he's got something for them. Couldn't be here. But, you know, uh, uh, if, if we had a real movement for God to hear the word of God, then we would probably have standing room. Wouldn't it be nice to put out a few chairs because we just had to, had to uh, 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 
uh, provide extra seating, uh, maybe the choir is full. Uh, you know, thank God. And, and thank God sometimes we'll see a, 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 a revival moving of, of sort that, that uh, you know, the house of God will be packed and God will move. Well, I, like to see, I like to see that happen on uh, not just Sunday morning, but Sunday night and Wednesday night. I'm glad, I wish you had to get here early on Wednesday night just to get a seat. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind to sit in the back. I'm all right with sitting in the back. In fact, I'd be all right standing if I had to. Now, I'd prefer not to stand the whole service, but I praise God. I tell you what, we ought, we ought, to, be, ought to be thankful that we had a place we can come and hear the Word of God preached and taught and that, uh, uh, and that we understand the need we have for that. And so, thank God, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you what, I'm think, I don't think it's hard for God to position us to where we can be successful. And, uh, you know, I like to fish, and uh, there ain't too many people that don't fish. There's few people that don't fish, but, uh, uh, but most of us like to go fishing a little bit. And, boy, I'm telling you what, it don't take much of an adjustment. You can be fishing all day. I've fished all night before, and, and then I've fished all day before and not done a bit of good. But then that one more throw and one more spot, and all of a sudden you're successful. I'm telling you, it doesn't take God long to position us if we'll just submit ourselves and, uh, 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 and let him work in our lives. Uh, so, so thank God I'm glad that the people were rewarded. They pressed upon it. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the Bible says, uh, it says that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake, uh, uh, Genesaret, and saw two, st- uh, two uh, ships standing uh, by, the, by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their net. So, you know, uh, uh, it, it talks about the people pressing him, and and so he had he had he, he he positioned himself to where he could reach more people. He got out there on the boat, and boy, you know what uh, what an audience he must have had that day. But thank God, he had another. He had he had it was more to the story. He was he was teaching Simon Peter some stuff right here. He was teaching him that that you know. Uh, uh, don't you forget uh, who I am. I don't think at that time, I'm not sure Simon Peter had it all together, exactly who he was, what he could do. But boy, I'm telling you what, God was working on him, just like he's still working on us today. Don't think we ever got, we ever have the Lord figured out. Just as soon as we do, get in that position, we're going to find out, oh, there's a whole lot more that I want to grasp here that we need to know. So the people were re- re- rewarded uh, uh, for... Uh, uh, for being there, for showing up, being on time. Uh, so, so the Lord, he'll always speak up right on time. And I'm, I'm, I'd like, I like being in that position to get that. And so, so that's, a good, that's a, good, uh, a good thing to remember about a precious fishing story. It's good. Uh, uh, God's good at positioning us for success. Turn over to Mark. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll head over to Mark uh, right quick here. Right direction here. Mark, let's see, Mark chapter 6. Let's look at another fish story here. Mark chapter 6. Now let's look there about, uh, let's see here where I want to start reading. It says, let's start about uh, verse, um, about verse 30. Mark chapter 6, about verse 30. And the Bible says, <clears throat> And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had, uh, they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye uh, yourselves apart into a desert place and rest uh, a while, for there are, many, uh, there are many coming and going, and they have no leisure so much as, uh, and they have, let's see, where am I at? He said, and he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart unto a desert place and, and rest a while, for there are there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to, to eat. And they, they, they de- departed into a, a desert place by ship privately, and the people saw them departing, and many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out, out went them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when, when he ca- uh, came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because there was, uh, because there was, uh, there was as sheep, they were as sheep, not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when the day was far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now, is, uh, now the time is far, uh, far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about 
and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Well, I thought about, you know, we're getting ready to see another uh, 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 miraculous fish story here. And, uh, uh, but, but God, he, he's good at positioning us for success. But, boy, he's good at, uh, uh, at providing for the many. Thank God he's a God that can b- provide for whosoever will. There's never been too many people that he couldn't take care of. And, boy, I'm telling you what, I think this is a great example here. Uh, uh, and the disciples, you know, they, they thought, well, we've got a problem here. But verse 37, he said, he, an- uh, he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat, and they shall say unto him, uh, and they say unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Uh, he said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they saw, uh, and when they knew, they say, Five loaves, five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make, to make all sit down by com- companies upon the uh, green ga- grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of fishies. Boy, I'm telling you what, thank God. I'm glad he can provide for the many. I'm glad he can, uh, uh, you know, verse 34 there, uh, it, it talks about, he says, the, 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 the sheep not having a shepherd. Uh, but I'm glad he's a shepherd of the sheep tonight. Now, a shepherd, a good, he's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. So that means he's got all bases covered. Whatever we need tonight, he can provide. Thank God. I'm glad for that. You know, I, I, we, we might have uh, touched on it a little bit uh, last week uh, when we was uh, over in Romans chapter 1 and the Apostle Paul was desiring to go to, uh, uh, to Rome, but God said no. Uh, you know, sometimes God said no. All our prayers, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm not real sold that uh, there's ever a no. It, it, a lot of times it's just... Uh, if it's a good prayer, then it's, it's answered maybe a different way than what we think it ought to be. It'll be answered the right way. It'll be answered God's way. And boy, God, just let him, let him have all that book of Romans and write it all down. And look, how many years has that been? That's been a lot. And I don't know how many more years uh, this time will go on, but that book of Romans be just as good when we get to the end of time as it is today. It's just as good today as it was back then. So thank God. I'm glad God knows. He's good at providing for the many. Boy, he provided, he provided this word of God for the many. Boy, they've been many, many, many times. I believe God's got a record every time the Bible's been opened and somebody read something out of it. You know, you reckon, he, you reckon he's got a record like that? I believe so. I, believe, I don't believe he's ever forgot anything. I don't think he's ate too much to, uh, that, uh, uh, that he can comprehend. He can comprehend it all. Thank God, I'm glad for that today. So he's, a, he's good at providing for the many. He, uh, for the, he's, a, he, he's good at, verse 35 and 36, he's good at uh, 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 having a solution for the situation. Always. He's always got a solution. So boy, when we find ourselves backed in the corner, when we find ourselves having a problem, we just want to remember who, who he is and what he does. We want to remember that he's good at providing. Thank God. Might think of one of these fish stories. Man, you know, he, he, uh, uh, he, he's good at positioning this for, for success. He's good at providing for the many. And boy, I'll tell you what, I believe we could go around the room tonight and we'd not, certainly not get finished talking about how well God has provided over the years. And boy, a lot of times, a lot of times it looks like this is hopeless. It cannot come out this right. This will not work. I've done run it on every calculator I can run it on. And a lot of times that ain't necessarily a number calculator. We'll run the, we'll run the math in our heads and we'll come up. And it just will not add up. But God, I'm glad that we can remember, but God, he's good. It's a good fish story tonight. I'm thankful for that tonight. Now, I don't know. Maybe I saved the best for last. I don't know. But I, I saved the one that, that really uh, seemed like got my attention in a in a, a, a major way, if you want to uh, turn over to Matthew uh, chapter uh, uh, 17, Matthew chapter 17. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 17. The Bible says, you know, when, when we uh, read these fish stories and, and we uh, see what God did and how he did it and uh, see some things about why he did it, I say, 
I don't believe we could say tonight we see all the reasons why he did it. We're still learning. We're still studying. We're still seeing. There's a lot in the book uh, uh, for us to comprehend and see how God works. But um, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 17, uh, you know, we, we, we know that uh, uh, the first fish story with God was good at positioning us for success, and then uh, he was good at providing for the many. But, boy, you, you're going to find here that he's good at paying debts he does know. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what, that, that gets a hold of me right there. I'm thankful for that tonight. And if I ain't careful, I'll get ahead of myself uh, 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 just a little bit here. Let's look there about, let's start reading in 17 about verse, uh, uh, let's see, 17 verse 24. The Bible says, And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master uh, pay tribute? And uh, notice how quick pre, uh, Peter was to say, he said, yes. Uh, the Bible said he says, yes. Uh, Peter, if we, you know, we know Peter a little bit. We know how spontaneous he was and how he's out to uh, uh, run off the mouth uh, a little quick and maybe uh, 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 stick his foot in his mouth. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, tri this tribute, uh, when you study on this, uh, uh, you'll find out that uh, this was, this, the Roman government uh, passed that down on people that they, they had conquered, and uh, uh, and they would uh, they would force them uh, to pay uh, pay them for um, uh, for being conquered. I'm, I'm having trouble with this thing here tonight. I noticed the preacher this morning have trouble with it. I don't know what's going on with that, but maybe we'll survive here. But um, but uh, you know it's tribute money. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you, uh, you would pay them uh, just for uh, uh, the privilege of being conquered by, by Rome. And so it's just another way to tax people. But, uh, uh, but you know, generally it was the kings that, were, uh, that had uh, overtaken these people and would put this tax on them. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we know who the king was. We know the Lord was the King of Kings, Lord of glo Glory, uh, Lord of Lords, and so we know that He really didn't qualify here uh, uh, for uh, 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 happen to pay tribute. And so uh, it says, and the Bible says in verse twenty-five, He says, "And when He was come into the house, Jesus uh, 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 prevented Him, saying." I looked up that word "prevented." It just means He anticipated God. Jesus already knew before He got there that day uh, how this was going to play out. Uh, that's a good thing for us to always remember. Always keep, keep be reminded that tomorrow, today, before we uh, get home today, there can be a situation that uh, can present itself to us that we got to remember God already knew that that was, that was uh, uh, going to happen. So, so it's good to remember that. I won't get sidetracked there, but he, he said, uh, Jesus said, uh, 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 prevented him saying, What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth uh, take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers. And uh, Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said uh, uh, unto him, then are the children free. So, you know, I think he was making his point that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, he didn't owe any tribute. He was the king, and uh, he, he didn't owe any tri tribute. But, uh, but uh, verse 20, 27 there, now this is, this is where I really, really like this, this uh, uh, precious fish story here. He says, notwithstanding, in other words, however, least we should offend them. Now notice, I, I kind of, uh, you know, we can't spend too much time here, but, but I like to not look over these words. And, uh, you know, the people came uh, to uh, Peter and asked about Jesus' praying tribute. But down here in verse 27, uh, he said, at least we should offend them. So I really think he was taking some pressure off the, of Peter here, not, not himself. The Lord knew what, how things were going to go for him, but, uh, but he knew that, uh, uh, that, that Peter didn't understand all that. And, um, uh, but he said, uh, he said, notwithstanding, at least we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast in hook and take up the fish that uh, first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Now, I'll tell you what, how many of us, if, we, if God really impressed upon our heart, 
something similar to this. Now, you know, and I believe we have to deal with things like this all the time. We may not be sent down to the lake to go fishing and catch a fish with, with a coin in his mouth. Thank God. I don't know how successful. Uh, well, I'll tell you how self successful that would be if God sent us down there here to work. It worked for Peter here. And, uh, 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 and so I'm, I'm thankful for that. But, you know, I, I'm thinking, here's Peter. Uh, he, he's, he's headed out down there. I hope he didn't stop and dig a little bait, you know. Now, that's probably what I'd do. I'd probably check my fishing pole. I'd probably make sure my line's real good, get me a real good hook, and then I'd stop and find, dig me out some fishing worms on the way to, you know, help God out a little bit. So in case I, my, I don't want, want my, my pole to break, I wouldn't want my line to break, I wouldn't want the hook to not be real sharp and the fish get off, and certainly everybody knows a fish ain't going to bite a hook with no worm on it, you know? But boy, God didn't tell him he had to go do all that stuff. He just said, he said, uh, uh, it just, um, he said, that, go thou to the sea and cast an hook. He didn't even tell him we're about in the sea. Uh, uh, he, he said, uh, uh, and, uh, and cast an hook and take up the fish. So boy, you know what? I'm telling you what, God can, he can do whatever he commissions us to do. We can count on it. We, we can always be, we can be certain that God will always come, come through with that. Well, I don't know. I hope you can hear without hanging right there. That's the way it's going with the preacher this morning. I reckon it's passed on to me this evening. We'll get this worked out. If I need to cut it off, brother, and go to Mike. You want me to do that? Uh, all right. All right. We're, we're, on the, we're on the mic now. So we'll just let this thing hang here uh, just a little bit. Uh, but, um, but, you know, uh, we, 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 sometimes we think that, boy, it's just impossible. It's like, like reaching family. I've always heard how hard it is to reach family. Well, I'm telling you what, uh, a family's not, not that easy. We'll, I'll give you that. And, uh, uh, and, and they know about the, all there is to know about us, and they ain't forgetting any of it, you know. Uh, they, they remember all that. But, boy, you know what, when God takes over, when we get that good Holy Ghost anointing to head down and tell somebody that they're going to have to correct their ways and time's running out for that. And boy, when you show up that way, then it'll get above family. It'll get deeper than family. It'll get real. And I'm, I'm thankful that, that we can reach our family. I've seen several saved over the years. Still got more to go. I believe we could probably all name a lot of people, not just our, our immediate family, but people we work with, people across the world, whosoever will. But, uh, but th thank God, I'm glad that, uh, uh, you know, when God gives us this uh, 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 way to do things, we ought to do it just like he says, just like he says, because that's how it'll work. We can spend our all time getting ready to go fishing. We can spend all of our time preparing to go fishing. I do a lot of that, uh, you know. I'll think on it for days. I'll, I'll, I'll get this together and that together and still forget and leave something. But boy, I'm telling you what, let's just head out. Let's just be equipped with what God's equipped us with. Let's be, let's be sure that we're in the right place at the right time so we can get all, all the fishing instructions that, uh, that Peter needed here. He didn't even need a fishing license. I don't recommend you go fishing this day and time without fishing license. Uh, uh, unless God says to. In other words, you know, if he does that, you're probably going to leave the little gate warden to the Lord. That'll be all right. may have to do it through the bars, but that'll be all right. But I'm, a, I'm a telling you, just, just, uh, I love this fish story. It just, he said, he said, just take a hook, go down there and throw it in, uh, you know, uh, and, and what you have to understand, what you have to realize, don't forget, I don't know how long that coin's been down there. It might have been the first coin ever made. That'd be, that ain't hard for God. It could have been the first coin ever made. Somebody was so proud of that thing. And, and you know, said, man, I would help uh, mint these coins. And this was the first one to come off. And somewhere or another, God threw it out there in that ocean. And who knows how long it laid there. Who knows how long it was there. But God knew it was there. And you know what? He don't have any trouble. You know, if you read over there. Now, you know, there's a real, there's a real big fish story in there. There's a big fish story about uh, 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 a whale. And, uh, uh, you know, God, the Bible says that God spoke to the whale. You know, he can speak animal language. He can, he can speak fish. And, 
And, you know, he didn't have a bit of problem. You know, those fish, those animals, they don't have no problem being obedient to God. God speaks to them, and they just go do what they do. That old fish, I wonder how long he'd been sitting down there with that thing in his mouth just waiting for that hook. And, you know, boy, I'm telling you what, God's good. I'm telling you, he can take care of us. He can help us uh, in these times of, uh, uh, of need that we have. And certainly, uh, as we go forward, as we, as we, uh, uh, as we serve the Lord, and uh, I've had a wonderful time over in the book of Romans, and uh, uh, there's a whole lot more there. We just bar uh, barely scratched the surface. But, but I'm glad that, that I, uh, uh, you know, we can share what's precious to us tonight. We can share, share what's precious to us every day. And God forbid we head out to the workplace tomorrow and, and, and somebody uh, looks at us and, 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 and they, uh, you know, somebody say, well, you figure it's precious to him. And, boy, they name everything but the Lord. That'd be, that's not a good testimony. That, uh, that ain't where we're at. And boy, you know what? Uh, uh, that's, that's something that we, can, we need to improve on. So that, you know, uh, uh, you, know they'll, you, 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 you can tell when you're getting there. They don't want to have lunch with you anymore. You know, they don't want to hang around with you anymore. And they have these little gatherings. All of a sudden, you, figure, you realize you didn't get invited to that. Wonder why? Well, you know, you'll know why. You, 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 most time, you know why. But, uh, uh, but thank God, I'm glad that, uh, that the Lord, uh, he, he, uh, he, he paid a debt that he didn't owe. He didn't owe these, uh, this tribute. But boy, uh, 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 you know, he could have said, I don't owe anyone anything. Uh, but uh, if he did owe anything, he wouldn't have had a problem to pay just like he did here. But boy, one day, one day, I he said, I know a bunch of people that do owe a debt. I know a bunch, and and he done looked down through time, and he saw a bunch that owed a debt, and uh, and and he said, boy, you know, well, God so loved the world. Thank God, I'm glad He loved us. I'm glad He loved us that He sent His only begotten Son. Thank God for Jesus tonight. I'm glad that uh, He paid a debt that I that I owed. He paid a debt that He didn't owe. So thank God, I'm glad that uh, uh, I'm debt free tonight because that's being that's being paid. You're debt if you're here, born again, saved tonight, debt free. Praise God. You you, you know, thank God. I, I, praise the Lord. I'm glad to be debt free. You know, we we spend all of our life uh, uh, working and and uh, uh, you know we have these debts that we have to pay off. Uh, but boy, you know. Uh, it, it took a lot of years before I realized I had a debt that I, I was never going to be able to pay off. And I wasn't even trying very hard. But boy, one day, one day, what, what worked back then is still working today. One day, somebody come along and told me about, about my, my, my position that could not be paid for, my debt that could not be paid for in myself by anyone on this earth but boy thank god i know uh, I, I know one that didn't he never owed it but he paid it thank god for the lord tonight i'm glad to be saved tonight thank the lord they ain't only one uh, ain't anything better than being saved or maybe i should say the only thing that's good is being saved is seeing other people saved that's what's that's what's near and dear to the heart of god and I'm a telling you what, let's encourage someone tomorrow. Let's encourage someone maybe tonight. We may, you know, I don't spend much time on Facebook, but enough to not want to spend any more than I do. But, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes I see some good encouragement. But sometimes I see some stuff and I think, well, that ain't helping the cause any. Uh, or, or, you know, uh, I'll never forget the, uh, been a few years ago and I missed this this is a missed opportunity and uh, uh, you know this one of them things that the Lord goes to like that beaver working on that tree he goes to chipping on you and said boy I'm telling you what you blew it there I was at the gas station a few years back and you know when the gas prices were so bad and and you know we didn't like it we still don't like gas prices uh, uh, being being extremely high but they was real high and uh, I was over there minding my own business I do a little bit too much of that sometimes, you know, minding my own business. You know, I ought to be a little more concerned about God's business. 
and uh, you know that day God had somebody on the other side to pump pumping his vehicle oh he was all frustrated and he was pumping and he didn't like it he was fussing about them um, high gas prices well I didn't like the high gas prices either but I was thankful at that time I still had enough money to buy gas so thank God I'm glad I could do that but then I never forget I'm sorry I'm just fess just fessing up tonight but I heard him say a man ain't got a hope and I thought oh what an opportunity what a door that I didn't step through oh let me tell you about that hope tonight Boy, thank God. I'm glad our hope is in the Lord. That's a good hope, solid hope. It'll be good in the morning. It'll be good through trials and tribulations. It'll be good when the fishing's not going that well. But, boy, you'll know that God is still working. So let's keep on, keep on being fishermen of men, of souls, and just keep on doing our part. God said, I'll do mine. He'll, he'll do his. He promises that. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the few minutes you give us tonight. Lord, we are thankful about, for the precious things that you uh, have given us, Lord. The precious thing of uh, that, that wonderful gift of salvation, Lord, that none of us deserved. But, Lord, we are, we are we're so thankful tonight. God, help us now to uh, uh, just to uh, continue on for your glory. Help us to always be uh, conscious of who we are and what our, our responsibilities are and what your, your desire is for us to do. So God, just have you will and your way in our hearts and lives. Lord, uh, 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 we're looking forward to hearing soon about someone who's been saved in our families, in our neighborhood, work, places we work with. Lord, I'd like to see some of the people that I, uh, I'm trying to reach uh, be saved. But Lord, I'd like to see uh, 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 other people's family and friends, co-workers uh, get saved. Lord, that's just as important to you as, as, uh, uh, as my family is. So, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for that. So, God, help us now. Lead us and guide us. And we're going to thank you in advance for what you do because we'll know whatever you do is going to be good. It's going to be right. And we're thankful tonight. In the precious one's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Well, I ain't too late.